What's everyone? It's Matt Morozik, and this will be working parts number five, I think, on Aquaman. So uh, I thought about doing the seahorse or the crab next. We're gonna do the shark next because it's very similar to the whale uh, that I just did the other couple days ago. So again, uh, looking online at reference photos uh, for the inside of his mouth, and I think we're gonna use this as a go by. Again, it's like when I zoom the whale, every shark is different. So it depends on uh, if they just ate something, if their mouth is bloody. Um, but from what, from what I can tell is that basically they have a really light pink, almost white inside of their mouth. So um, I think, actually I like this picture, but I think it may be a little too bloody. Um, I don't know if I want to go for that look. That doesn't make sense on this, I don't think, because he's not eating anything. But I think the one I'm going to use, let me download this real quick, is going to be this one as my go-by. I'm going to use this as my reference. Um, it's very similar to what the sculpt is. And um, getting text as I do this. So again, I think I'm just going to go for a, a... It's not quite pink. It's got more red in it. So um, I think what I need to do is instead of doing what I did on the shark, what I did um, a light pink and then a wash, I think I'm just going to start off with a, uh, a lighter shade and just dry brush up all the details. And then... Um, and go from there the one thing about this is that these teeth are they're sharp and they hurt and they're fragile i broke one off just by picking it up so gotta be careful um i went in and did a quick little coat of gray primer with the krylon just to see how my putty work looked and it looks fine so first step i'm going to do is i'm not going to do rattle can because that took forever to dry last time i'm going to come in here with some uh, semi-transparent white as a base and if it covers up all the way, it's okay. If it doesn't, no I'm staying away from the white style res. That caused me all sorts of problems last time. I'm not sure if my bottle's bad or what, but it was it just created way more headaches than um, I needed. So I'm just gonna go in here with my airbrush, and this is GarageKits.us semi-transparent white. And we're just gonna lighten this up so it's just not gray. I'm gonna come up on the outside of the mouth too. We've got transition from the mouth to the skin and I'll have to flip this upside down so I can get back behind the teeth and everything again I just want to lighten the gray up a little bit so I'm not trying to um, when I go in there with my red or whatever I'm not trying to um, cover up so much because red is a terrible color at hiding um, any color red for whatever reason the pigments just, just don't hide very well so when you do red or pink so I get to start off with a lighter base so that will affect it will affect your overall tone of the color now from what I see on the production paint they went really dark on the gums which uh, the only time I saw that any reference photo is if a shark had just eaten because it's blood uh, they're almost like a brownish red, um, so that's what I saw in the production paint. So that's not completely realistic, which is fine because it is a comic, but I'm trying to get a little more realistic look on these things than, um, than a comic look. Again, I'm not going to worry about covering this up 100%, just enough to kind of knock the gray back a little bit. The skin should be kind of cool because um, I never noticed, but looking at photos, there's actually a lot of texture to shark skin. Um, a lot of little details I never noticed. So uh, that should be kind of fun to go in there and do that. If he does have some scars, that will have to go through and um, look at how I'm going to do those. Um, they wouldn't be fresh scars or healed, so I have to look at photos of scars on a great white shark. And again, all the photos I've seen, unless they've just eaten, their teeth are actually pretty white. They're not like they're not yellow like the the uh, orca was. So I'll do those brighter than the orca's teeth. I probably won't base coat them in yellow. I'll probably just base coat them in off white and then do that transition technique I did around the gums. Okay. 
This is pretty good. Again, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't worry about covering 100%. I just want to knock this gray down a little bit so it's not so dark. Um, and then like the whale, there's some pink that comes out here to this edge on the corners. And there's a pretty harsh line between the skin and the gums of the shark. So um, it's sculpted in pretty good right here. There's a pretty good delineation right there. Again, I'll just airbrush that really fine edge. <clears throat> I learned a couple things doing the whale, so as far as what I need to do and not do, just to make let my life easier. And I'm not going to paint the water that goes inside here until I paint the base. So I want it to be the same uh, tone. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Again, it's not completely opaque, but that's fine. We don't need it to be 100% covered. Actually, add a little bit to the shading. So we got that, and we'll let this dry for a little bit, and then we're gonna go in there, and I'm gonna lay in, um, on this, I'm gonna lay in the darkest red. It's almost like a blood red, so, um, looks like this guy may have just eaten, but his teeth are clean. But you can see he's kinda got this bloody thing going on there. I'm not going to go for blood, I'm going for just this kind of white, almost pink, so, or pink, almost white look. So for that, what I'll probably do is, I um, thought about doing that, but that's just too pink. I think I might mix up a custom color. It's almost a flesh tone. I could probably get away with, I could probably get away with doing like uh, this warm beige and adding a little red to it. That might work. We'll see what that does. When my when that paint dries, because on the whale I, I went I did straight up pink. Um, you know, I mixed up that custom pink. And I, one of the uh, comments I got on that he looked a little too pink uh, in the photos, but I think they just the, the photos were a little saturated, so it's not actually as pink as it looks in the photos. And those are cell phone photos. My cell phone tends to add a lot of, a lot of red. Things. So I'm gonna mix up some of this. So I've got this, um, what's this called? Warm beige. And I'm just gonna add like a drop or two of red to it. And I'll mix that up and see what we got. That's pretty pink. Maybe a little more red. I'm gonna start out dark and bring up the the details with dry brushing. Okay. I think this may be a good starting point here. Let's look at my photo and this color. Let's see what I got. So I've got my phone over to the side here and I'm gonna take some of this paint and look at it right against the screen. And that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit dark. I'm gonna start just a little bit darker. I'd rather have a little more on the red side. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And this will dry darker. So I got this kind of color going on now. It's actually pretty similar to what I had on the on the whale. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna bring it up more 
more toward white. I just gotta mix this up with water. Since this is a craft paint, I gotta mix it up really, really well. So I'm gonna do that and I'll come back when I'm ready to spray. Okay, I decided to do a little pre-shading in there first. What, I admit, what I'm doing, and I can't, I'm not gonna show this on camera because I have to have this in my lap as I get inside the mouth. But I mixed up a kind of like a, I mixed up a little bit of this um, sand of red with a little bit of brown. I kind of got this really darker red. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna hit all the creases a little bit with that with my airbrush. Um, again, I, have, I won't be able to show it to you because I, I can't get the camera in the mouth along with my airbrush. But I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like, and then I'm gonna mist over the color I mixed up earlier, which is good. This kind of little. Uh, medium pink tone. So once I'm done with the pre shade I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is what we have so far, and it's looking good. So I just went in there and hit all the shadows and everything with that color. And now I'm going to take this lighter pink that I've got mixed up, and I'm going to start misting it on. And back off. Just mist this on. Gonna kind of build this up real slowly. This is pretty watered down, so I can't put it on real wet. I'm basically spraying tinted water. This is gonna knock down the red I just sprayed and and the white a little bit, and it should get us pretty damn close to where I need to be for the overall color. I went under here and hit all these high, all these little wrinkles so again I'm just going to do this real slowly So I'm going to continue to do this because it's going to take a while and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, well I sprayed that pink and I lost quite a bit of my shadow. So I'm going to go back in with the mi about a 50-50 mix of the, the highlight color and the shadow color and hit the shadows again. Because um, I just, in order to get it kind of blended, I, I lost my shape, some of my shading. So I'm going to go back and hit it again, just not quite as dark. And I'll show you that when I get back. Okay, so I got the pink done, I think, the way I want it. Um, I just recorded without recording. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to seal it and I'm going to come back and start dry brushing in and I'll br bring out those details. And I think I'll probably dry brush with that uh, warm bisque, that initial color I used to mix the, the first pink. Um, and then we'll see what that looks like. And uh, I'm keeping all my little custom made colors to the side here in case I need to go back and kind of mist some of those on. Um, you know, if I get it looking a little wonky, I can kind of go back and blend in with those colors. But I need to seal this before I do any dry brushing. Otherwise, I'll just lift the paint off the surface. Uh, I can't hit this with a hair dryer, and then I'll dry these really quick. Because, again, I'm spraying mostly water. And then uh, I'll seal it and come back. Okay, so now I'm coming in with this warm bisque and just real lightly dry brushing this on. And it's bringing out all these wrinkles and everything in the sculpt. Just really kind of hitting the high points. Again, just very lightly. Hardly a paint on my brush coming in here. And just building it up slowly. See, you can kind of see it there. Okay, 
and kind of going against the, the grain of the wrinkles so the, the details get popped out. And I'm deciding whether or not I go up one more level from here. I'm add a little bit of white to this. And then go up one more level. Let's see. And the transition from the gums of the gray and white skin, I'll do that with an airbrush. I do not. Okay. That's looking pretty good, I think. Let's see, I gotta do the bottom side a little bit. That's hard to get to. Sorry, I can't see it now because I've turned it where you can't see, but I'll show you here in a second. So this step really brings out all the the details. You go with the airbrush and kind of get overall shading and stuff like that. But then when you dry brush, it brings out all the other details, all the wrinkles and folds and all that stuff. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna add just a touch of white to this. Bring it up a little bit. Just a little bit of white. Just 
just going to hit the outside of the gums, I think, with this. And I may, once I look at this and seal it, I may mist on on the inside a little bit of that darker kind of pink I had going before. Just so not everything is just the same tone. to that again and I'm just gonna again just kind of start doing this transition a little bit of dry brushing photo see how we're looking okay so my reference is a little bit brighter but I'm gonna stick it I'm gonna stay here because if I get too bright then we're gonna look like the whale mouth again and I don't want it I don't want matching so I think I'm gonna stick here and I think I may go in um, I wish I had some red pan pastels. I may go with some pastels and hit the shadows again because I keep, every time I go in here and I do this, I kind of lose a little bit of my shadow detail. And I don't really want to bring that out a little bit more. So I'm going to go seal this. And then I'll bring out my, I think I'll get my pastels out and go in there and hit some of these spots. It's just too hard to get in there with an airbrush. I can't get an airbrush in here and angle it the way I need. I'm really to get the effect I want. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to seal it and I'll come back. Okay. I keep forgetting to hit the record button. <laughs> I got some pastels mixed up over here. I mixed some brown, some red, and a little bit of pink. And I kind of got this darkish red kind of flesh tone going on. And I'm going in here with my, my brush. And then I kind of dab it on. And then I use the soft side to blend it out. Um, these are the stick pastels, the, the cheaper ones, not the pan pastels, so I'm going to have to do this twice because they tend to lose their vibrance or their strength after you seal it. And that's just that's just the nature of the cheap pastels. They do that for some reason. I guess there's not a lot of pigment in it. So I'm just going to go in here and do this. I'm not even sure if you guys can you guys, I got Hopefully that YouTube doesn't <laughs> flag my video. I had my movie playing on the background. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go in here and just do this and the deep shadows and then seal it and hopefully I don't lose, this is pretty subtle, I don't want it jarring, I just want to blend them in a little bit. to dab them because it tends to make them stick better. <sighs> I'm not sure if you can tell the difference. I can. It's pretty subtle, but shadows are getting a little darker. So I'm going to do this, seal it, and we'll come back. Okay, so those pastels really did the trick. And now I'm going in there. I am going in with pure white, very lightly on my brush, and just hitting the gums again. And then I think I'll have... Uh, the gums and the inside of the mouth, well, except for the teeth, the fleshy part done. This is um, 
it's probably starting to get where I want. So again, it just takes me a while sometimes to go back and forth between my steps uh, to get the look I want. Um, it's rare that I get it right the first time. It usually takes two or three tries. I know what I'm going for. Sometimes I can just go too far in a step and I can go back a little bit and that's what happened. So this is starting to look really good. Um, so for the dry brushing, I'm going from the outside in because it's wider on the outside than it is on the inside. So that's why I'm going this direction. I'm not going to hit the back of the throat with this at all. I'm just going to leave that the color it is. But I'm doing this to bring out some of the details in the in the gums. I think that was pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. It's a little darker than my reference, but again, I want to just, I want to make sure this looks different than the whale. The whale is really is, is more on the pink side. This is on the redder side. I got some nice shading with that those pastels on the gums, and in the back of the throat, it's nice and dark and fleshy. So now I'm going to base coat these teeth. I don't have to worry about sealing it right now. I'm going to do them in a uh, in the Vallejo because it covers really well. I think I'll do, instead of doing, I'm not going to do uh, yellow, but I have a, uh, this elf, elfic flesh, which is a, like a warm, a warm tone. It's like a warm white. And again, just get a, you know, my flat brush I just used a little bit here. Hobby Lobby had their paint brushes on sale last week, so I went again and stocked. Every time they're on sale, I buy a bunch of brushes because they're really cheap that way. All right, so I got some Elphic Flesh. And again, nothing really crazy about this one. You just go in there and base coat the teeth. With the Vallejo, I'll take one coat. There's a lot of teeth, so this will take a while, so I won't show it on camera, but I'll do one. Just base coat it. Like that. So I'm gonna go around and do them all because it's fairly white. It's not, I don't, I don't want them stark white. That looks weird. But I will dry brush some white on the tip. So I'm gonna do that to all of these and then we'll blend them into the gums and then uh, do the final highlighting when we come back. Okay, so we're going to work on uh, blending these teeth into the gums a little bit. And like I did before, I put a little, just a teeny tiny bit of oil at the bottom of the teeth, tooth there. I'm taking a soft flat brush and I'm blending it in. Hitting the gum a little bit too so the colors blend in well. And just bring it up just a little bit. Just like that. So I'm going to do that to all the teeth front and back and then we'll seal it again, dry brush some white and this should be done. Okay, so I didn't record it, but I went ahead and dry brushed white on the teeth, and I think the inside of the mouths are done. So I just seal it, let this dry for a while, and then I'll work on the skin uh, either later today or tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it's looking good so far. Alright, so now we got to paint the outside of this guy, uh, the white and the gray part. So, what I'm going to do, I think, is um, i got to think about how I want to do this. Because I got to, so there's white all around his mouth. So that's relatively easy to do. I think we're going to go in with, um, I'm not going to do pure white because it wouldn't be pure white. I'm going to go in with a, again, like I maybe do a uh, warm gray, semi-transparent warm gray. Where's our number two? Let's try this. Let's see how what this looks like. This might be a little too, this might be a little too dark. But I've got to make the transition between the lips and the skin. So I'm going to try this with them. Um, GarageKids.us and I'm going to try to go in here real carefully. 
I gotta look at my reference photos again of where that transition happens. I got a few I got a few more saved. Um, let me pull those up. This is a good one here. Okay, so it's a pretty it's a pretty harsh and not a real soft transition. Airbrushes acting up a little bit. Okay, it's spraying when it's not supposed to spray, so I may change airbrushes. But I want to use this one. Uh, let me clean my airbrush. I'll come back. Okay, I think I got it working. Let's give this a shot. We'll try this first. If this is this, this, this too dark, we'll go back just to white. I'm just gonna come in here real carefully. Try to get this kind of separation done first. And I gotta look at the side of the mouth where it comes down, so it comes down. I have to go back in there with some red. I need to do that transition a little bit more. Coming in real tight. We're gonna just outline the mouth first. I'm going over several times because this is a semi-transparent paint, so I gotta build it up slowly. So I'm going to continue to do this around the mouth, top and bottom, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I went in and blocked in uh, kind of where the white's going to go with that semi-transparent warm gray number two. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a darker shade. I'm going to add some shadow detail, and then I'm going to go back over this with semi-transparent white. So for the shadows, because I want to add shadows to the this part too. Um, I want a darker tone, so maybe that's probably too dark. Um, maybe four. Let's see what four looks like. I'm thinking that may be too light. Let's look at uh, where's number five, or seven, six. Six might be the good color because the, depending on, again what chart you look at, the top of the the darker gray has some different tones in it, um, some black um, in there, or it's really dark and gray. So I'm gonna go in here with the this number semi-transparent number six. And add some shadows. This, may, this might not be dark enough for the top color, we'll see. This will be good for the white though. Okay. 
All right, so here we're gonna go in. I think the gills are right here. Let's see how dark this is. Build it up. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just adding some shading to the gills. I feel like there's some shape here. We've got some scars here, some wounds. I'll go back in with some of the red and pinking those up a little bit. I'm going to go in here and add all these shadows, and then when we do the semi transparent white on top, um, it'll be nice, some nice shapes and stuff underneath the skin. So I'm going to go around and do this, and then when I'm done, I'll come back and show it to you to see what it looks like before I put the white on top. But again, it's just kind of turning this into light and looking for all the different shapes and things in the sculpt. I think it may go darker up top, you'll see. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. That's kind of the start of what I've got going on, and then I'll come back once I'm done with the shading. All right, so this is what this looks like after I've done that kind of shadowing effect. Now I'm going to go back in with my semi-transparent white. I'm basically going to do the same thing I did on the first color. Um, and just come in here carefully along the, the lip line and outline everything. And then I'm going to come back and kind of blend this all in and bury the, the shadows. You know, I'll probably have to do this on my lap just so I can get to all the different spots, but I can do a little bit right here. And those scars are gonna go in and I'll I'll add a little bit of red to them to pink them up a little bit. I get a little overspray on the gums. I can go back in and just dry brush some of the highlights back on. I'm getting a little bit right there. That's no big deal. I can fix that. Okay, so I pretty much have the, the mouth outlined. 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and gonna open up my airbrush a little bit. And I'm gonna start just misting this on. Be careful to stay away from the mouth. The open part at least. Build this up. So that first gray I put down is kind of like our, like the midtone underneath the white. I'm just back and going to back off like this and just slowly build it up. Turn my air pressure up a little bit. I'm going to go past where it needs to go. The gray, actually, the darker gray actually comes down to about right here below the eye, but I'm just going to do this up here because I should have done that on the whale. I should have just brought the brighter color up higher. And then brought the, the darker color down to meet it instead of trying to mask it and all that stuff. Really, really lightly building this up because I don't want to lose my shading. Even though this is a semi transparent color, um, technically it'll never really get opaque. But I don't want to. Well, two things the garage kits that US paints you can't put on wet, they do funny things. And secondly, I don't want to really lose the shading too fast. I want to do it slowly. Because it will dry down and get a little darker as it dries. We're well, going there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to continue to build up the white, and when I'm done, I'll come back and show it to you. Okay, so this is what we look like after I missed the white on. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in with the white, and just a little bit, kind of just hit the high spots, just to kind of build that highlights up a little bit more. I don't want to hit the shadows anymore, so I'm going to come in here and hit all the highlights a little bit. Just to get closer to pure white. So right there, how we're looking right there on the cheek is kind of what we're going for. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back and we'll do the next step. Okay, so I'm happy with the white. I think we're looking really good. Got some nice shapes and shadows in there. Um, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm kind of going to repeat the same things. I saw one highlight when I get here real quick. Um, with the gray, the darker gray, but we'll just do it darker tones. Sorry, I saw a highlight I missed. I want to get it. 
API here. This guy looks mean. He's ready to eat something. Okay, sorry. Um, so now we're going to come in with a, I think I'll do number seven, warm gray, because that's the darkest tone I got for this color, this set of colors. go back and look at where my reference photo to see where it meets the white. I'll clean this out real quick. Okay, so this is transparent warm gray number seven. Don't need a lot of this, I don't think. And I kind of already did some shading earlier with that other color, but it's not dark enough. You can see it there, but it does kind of give me um, some references to go in with this now. So again, I'm just going to come in here and hit the shadows. Most of these are pretty soft, so I'm backed off quite a ways. getting this on the white so just gotta be careful there let me look at my reference to see the shape of this black line okay so it comes basically from right underneath the nose here over the nostril right below the eye and then it kind of comes down here. So, alrighty. So this will go the dark color. So it comes right about, once it comes underneath the eye here, it pretty much comes straight down this way. Now, this is interesting. It's kind of like the um, the uh, swordfish I did. There's kind of this pattern right along the edge. So I'll probably go in there with the stencil again and do that once I get to that spot. So I'm not going to um, draw my outline with this dark color. I'm going to do that with the medium color, I think. So for now, I'm just going to add the shading to the gray. The eyes surrounded in gray. Got some tight wrinkles right here, so I'm getting close. back off and kind of miss this because there's one big kind of shadow right here. Let's head tip us back. I already shaded the lungs a little bit. I'm going to kind of do a little outline here where it meets the water. I did that on the other color too. I didn't mention that, but I did. Just to give it a little. Shadow helps ground it to the base. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm backed up pretty far right now.
Once I get this color on, the eyes again are just black, so I'll just gloss coat those again. But the very last step will be to pinking up the wounds and touch up anything along the gum line that I may have gotten some paint on. Okay. It's looking pretty good. There's a little divot here. Which means there'll be one on the other side. Pretty symmetrical. I'm just hitting that kind of light, not real hard. And there is, um, you know, on the production paint, the nose is pretty, it's got like a dark spot right on the tip of the nose. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to come in with um, uh, the mid tone, which I think we're going to do. I think we're going to do number six. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, crap. Always make sure that your bottles are closed. Okay, number six may be too dark. Let's look at number five. If I can find it. I had these organized and they got disorganized. One number five. There it is. Because again, I'm looking at some different sharks. And depending on the shark, depends on, determines the color. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw basically the border between the white and the and the gray. So this is going to be going to be kind of freehand. I'm actually going to do this in my. Let's see if I can do it here. Okay, so it comes. Let's see from here. Top of the nostril. Right there. And then it comes back down this way. Underneath the eye. Maybe too light. I'm gonna outline with this, and then I'm gonna go back with the, the number six because I think the five is too light. But this will give me the outline at least. So again, I can't see what I'm doing, but that's okay because I'm just repeating the step. So I'm gonna uh, do this, and I'll come back. Okay, so I'm going in with that transparent number six. I'm gonna transparent number six and kind of blocked in the gray again, just right along the white, and it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with this. Um, so, again, depending on the shark you look at, <laughs> depends how dark it gets on top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, I'm going to kind of mist this on. It's real light. Again, kind of like it is a white, just to blend in the shadows a little bit. And then I'll probably go in. Hit the shadows again a little bit more. Or 
I'll just darken the top a little bit. Get this real light, filling it up slowly. So I lost a little bit of my shadows. I'm going to go back in and hit those again a little bit. Maybe blend into this in just a little too much. So I'm going to go back in with the number seven. Hit the shadows again a little bit more. Now it does, again, it starts, it does kind of transition from a, a lighter gray to the darker gray on top. And depending on the shark, there are some little patterns along the edge. So I think I may do that a little bit. Let's see. Let me look at my reference photo again. Yeah, so just every once in a while, there's like a little a bit of this kind of look going to the edge. I'm using a pretty tight portion of the stencil here. Can I get this little can I get this little dotted look right along the edge? So I'm gonna do that around and then come back. Okay, so doing that stencil makes a huge difference in how this looks. It makes it look really good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to blend this in a little bit just so it's not so harsh. Just real light. But it makes the transition between the skin tones much more realistic to looking to me. It's pretty subtle, but it looks really good. Okay, so I'm done with that for now. Um, I guess I'm going to go back and hit my shadows a little bit more with number seven actually yeah, just add a little number seven to what's in my airbrush now kind of go back and hit these a little again it's real light There's a lot of back and forth with the shading. It's easy to kind of go a little too far with the blending sometimes and I think that's what happened. I'm just backed up way far away. And I'm going to hit the top of this a little, I'll go shark a little bit darker. But now I just want to bring out these shadows. I just want to bring out these shadows a little bit more on both sides. is clogged. Dry tip. Get dry tip pretty easily with these with these paints. Okay. We're getting there. Starting to look really good.
shark skin is a little tougher than the whale. The whale, I just, I basically just sprayed uh, black and white. I didn't do any shading on the whale skin. Um, on the shark, I'm doing quite a bit. I also want you to hit these notch nostrils again. So I may have to come back and hit some of my white again. I uh, just got a little bit of overspray from blending of the gray, so it's no big deal. Um, it's pretty, it's really not that noticeable. Okay, so now on the top, I'm back on the top again, and I'm going to hit the shadows again, a little light. Come on. I'm hitting the shadows because I'm going to miss this darker color and real light just on the top. And on the tip of the nose. I'm not going to do as much as I did on the production paint, just real subtle. Okay. And then I'm going to just kind of miss this on a little bit. It's on the very top. Darken the top a little bit. Airbrush really needs to get clean things. Just Dirty. looking pretty good. I may come back in and lighten the top up just a hair. The shadow a little bit more. Just back and forth. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth until I get the look I want. So it's really kind of hard to see right now. Once I knock it down with some flat coat, it's going to look really awesome. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 
Look at these real light again. Go back to my white real quick and kind of just get rid of some of this overspray I got on this on the white just a little bit. So I'm just kind of come in here and hit these highlights a little again a little bit. That's got a little overspray from blending the gray. Just gonna clean it up a little bit. I don't mind a little bit. I mean, it, it's all the same color family, but I do want a different, definite delineation between the white and the gray. I went to go wipe something off and I had dirt on my finger. Looking really good, man. Really happy with this. My first shark. I think I'm really happy with the skin. I think it looks pretty, pretty good. So I need to go seal this really well. I'm gonna let it dry. And then um, I'm gonna go in and pinking up the scars a little bit. Um, I'll paint the eyes. I think they're just black. Again, like the whales. Yeah, they're just black, but I'll gloss them over. Um, I'll paint them back and gloss them over. I'll bring it to life. And I got the water inside. I think I'm gonna wait to do the water until um, I do the base. I could do the water now, I guess. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll just so it's done. But yeah, that's looking really sharp. So uh, after I still will come back and I gotta touch up some of this little pink and stuff in here in the, in the gums a little bit where I got some overspray. So I'll do that when I come back. All right, so I went seal that. Hit it with the hair dryer. Uh, I seal the Krylon mat. Everyone, I always get asked, what do you seal with? And I always say in my videos, Krylon mat. So Krylon mat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. Uh, I still have all my watercolors mixed up from doing the mouth earlier. So I'm just gonna come in here with some of these and they're real watery, which is fine. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of do a little touch up on some of these areas where I got a little overspray. It's basically just doing a wash. I'm gonna put some on and then take it off. This is a little thicker here. Not too thick. I don't wanna paint it on. I just wanna, again, kind of stain the area. So I got a Q-tip here. Don't want a lot. Don't want a lot on here. Just want to come on, dab it. And there's a lot of water in this, and since I just sealed it. Um, 
surface tension isn't wanting it to really stick, which is fine. Like I said, I just want to kind of blend it in just a little bit more from spraying all the stuff on the skin. It's looking pretty good. The only spot that really was bugging me is right here. I got a little bit too much. I got a little careless with the airbrush. Don't, don't get on the white. I don't want to stain the white. <laughs> So I'm just putting it on and taking it off pretty quick. So put some on, take it off. I'm gonna, kind of like what I'm doing to a portrait. It looks like I'm taking it all off, but I'm actually not taking it all off because it does stain it a little, just a little bit. So that's why we do a little bit at a time. Okay. Looks pretty good. I don't think I got too careless on the top here. Let's see. Maybe a little bit right in here. Screwed the pooch. We hit this a few times right here. If I get some on the white where I don't want, I can just dampen a Q-tip and wipe it off. Again, just trying to, I don't have to get, cover this up 100%. I just want to lessen the effect of. The overspray. And I can use this red also. So I put, I, when I sprayed the sealer, I put it on pretty wet because I wanted the skin to kind of have a leathery look to it. So the Krylon mat, depending on how, I always say this, depending on how wet you put it on, if you put on real wet, it'll dry to a semi mat it won't be really flat now if you just mist it on it will dry really flat but then you get you kind of get a texture to the paint and so I, I tried not to put on too dry um, but I will put on wet specifically to get that effect of um, like a leathery look so now I'm gonna come in here I need to add a little more red to my paint because it's too watery and I want to come in here and do a wash on these scars I know where I have my paint a little thicker. too wet because now I can't stain the surface like I want. Paint's just rolling right off. So let me get more paint 
and less water. That's what I'll do because I still have it mixed up from yesterday. So let me get rid of all this. Hopefully it'll all come off. And the oils are probably the way to do it. I guess yeah, they're still here. Do, 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 do. Alright, where are my brushes I was using yesterday? A little flat one. This will work, and a little flat blending brush. That's perfect for there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of this oil here. the look I want. I don't want it to look like a fresh scar. Just kind of irritated. He's only got uh got this one and one other maybe. gray on here and maybe dry it out. Let's see. Yeah, I need to I need to get my uh, some mineral spirits and clean that up a little bit. I got too much on there now. spirits on this brush. Try to reduce this a little bit. We're getting there. This is being more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Not wanting to cooperate. Okay, and then there's another one somewhere. I thought I had another scar. Right here. Take the oil that I have on my brush already. Can do that. Yeah, I'll make it irritated around it just a little bit. So, and I've actually, I just saw this. <laughs> There's a little imperfection. Um, 
right here, and we're going to turn it into a scar. And there's a little one right here. Love using oils, man. Just gonna kind of do it anywhere I see a little. Like this could have been a a scar at one point. Anywhere the skin could look like it's been irritated. Oh, ah, crap. <laughs> Shit. Alrighty, hopefully that all comes off. I had oil on my thumb and I was holding it at the top of the head. I should. Yeah, okay. Be aware of what's on your hand before you start holding things. Luckily, mineral spirits is not, uh, the Krylon is not affected by mineral spirits at all. Thank God. Okay, let's see what else can I do around the mouth before we go seal this again. Uh, let's see. Got a little spirits on this Q-tip. Try to clean this up up here a little bit. Thing is bugging the hell out of me, and I don't know if I keep fussing with it, I could screw something up, so I may just leave it alone. It's a very nitpicky thing, but it's bugging me. A lot of times I do that, I'll go in, it's like, oh, I'm gonna just take care of this real quick, and I, I get too uh, worried about one little thing, and then I screw something up. <laughs> so sometimes you just gotta learn to leave stuff alone. Bit me in the butt several times. All right, let's see what else. I got a little bit of oil still here on my brush. So, oils you should really let, really let dry like at least overnight. Um, I put it on really, really thin. Um, and I was, who was I talking to? Uh, I was talking to a miniature painter at a, at a con or a convention. And he's a, an amazing oil paint, uh, miniature painter. And he bakes his oils. So he has like a, now he does miniature. So he uses like a little toaster oven really low temperature, like 240 or something like that. And he bakes his oils for about 10 minutes and it allows him to keep working because he does everything with oils. So I'm just going here and touching some of this up. So since I put this on real light, I, I usually hit it with a hair dryer for a few minutes and then I seal it and I haven't had any problems yet, so. But you really should let them dry. Because <laughs> you got let all the um, oil evaporate out of them. I got a little overspray here. I'm gonna. Just tint that a little bit. I got a very teeny tiny amount of oil on my brush here and I can use it to go in here and hit little areas that I think need a little more uh, tidying up. So that's what I'm doing. This Q-tip has some mineral spirits on it so I can go in here and 
got one end that's kind of wet and it's dry. I can go in here and just kind of blend these out a little bit. Like that. this little spot to look irritated around it. So I'm kind of dabbing around it so it just turns a little pink. Q-tips are really good for blending too because they're super soft. Okay, that's pretty good. Again, I'm just going in here and kind of futzing a little bit. Should just leave it alone because it's looking pretty good. Right here looks like this was like a scar before our wound kind of healed up a little bit. So we're gonna just kind of pinking it up. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing with it because I, I think it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go seal this one more time and then I'll gloss the eyes and he will be done. So uh, when I come back, I'll I can, what I can do right now while I have this, I'm going to go ahead and paint these black. Um, you know, my brushes. Especially the ones with oils. Some uh, metal spirits here. And clean these out. Just gonna paint. They're actually pretty dark right now, but let's see what how dark they look. That one looks pretty good. I can just gloss over that one, and I can just gloss over that one. So I'm just gonna go seal these with matte one more time, and then we'll gloss over the eyes. And I think Mr. Shark is done. I'm looking at this, and this may be it. Again, I'm just being nitpicky. Stop messing with stuff. Looks a, a tad too red to me. I'm gonna pull some of this uh, oil out of here. Okay. All right, one more round of sealer, and then we gloss the eyes. So we'll come back and gloss here in a minute. Alright, so the last step on this guy is to gloss the eyes. I'm going to use my Automotive 2K clear coat. Got a little bit mixed up here. It's a 4 to 1 mix ratio. And uh, I'm just going to put a thin coat on both eyes. Make sure my hands aren't dirty. I'm just going to do this in my lap.
sure you can see what I'm doing, but probably not because my probably in the way, but just need a thin coat and this will blow out as it dries. There we go. Uh, I thought about doing the water now, but I think it's better if I wait till I do the base so it's the same color. There you go. There's Mr. Shark. Looking pretty cool. So uh, that'll be the end of this work in progress. I'm not sure how long it'll be. Pretty long probably, but um, yeah, this one uh, went much smoother than the whale. Um, the skin took a lot longer because it's got more details and stuff, but um, yeah, I just went smoother because then <laughs> I don't know, the whale was kicking my ass. It should have been super easy and it took forever. This would have taken me a full day. I did I did the inside of the mouth yesterday and then I we had some family stuff and it's the day before Christmas Eve, so I finished up the skin today. So this would have been a full day paint work on this anyway. So yeah, again, this has been like an eight to 10 hour uh, day to get this painted just because of all the details and stuff. But he's looking really sharp. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. I think the next thing I'll do is probably the seahorse. But I won't tackle that until after Christmas. So, uh, catch you guys next time. Bye.